Hi, my name is Richard Dezeriga from the Microsoft Technology Center in Dallas. And in this video, we're going to look at taking a real life solution and delivering it as a SharePoint 2013 app. So there's lots of great resources online on how to build apps. But I thought I'd take a different spin in taking an existing application and try to re-platform that as a SharePoint 2013 app. So at Microsoft, we have a really popular uh, employee recognition application. We call it Kudos. And, and so I can go out and I can send Kudos to really anyone within the organization, a colleague, you know, anyone that I've worked with for you know, hard work that they've done or for just exceptional performance. When I send that Kudos, it's going to send an email to both of us, both of our managers, and it's going to add that Kudos to a social feed within the organization. I thought this would be a really great example of an app that I could re-platform in SharePoint. It has some really you know, close tie-ins to social. It's going to be looking at profiles for all kinds of information on you know, who our managers are, um, things like that. And so to me, it seemed like a great fit for the new SharePoint app model. And so I'm going to do this in kind of a two-part series. In part one, I'm going to really just deliver kind of the simplistic view of this app. And so when I say simplistic, I'm not going to worry about all the tenancy that might be involved of, of delivering this app from like a marketplace. Um, it is going to be an, an auto-hosted app, which means that it's going to be inside of Azure. But what I'm going to do is all the kudos information, I'm actually going to store that in a SharePoint list on the tenant site. It's going to be provisioned when they download the app, and I don't have to worry about you know, having a separate database for, for them. Um, in part two, I am going to make it a little bit more complex, and I'm going to say let's take that, that tenancy into consideration because now let's use something like SQL Azure to store all of the, the kudos information for all of our tenants. Um, SQL Azure is going to be much more uh, performant to do all kinds of you know, statistics and analytics on our kudos than doing camel queries against a SharePoint list. So um, again, this is part one. It's more of the let's deliver the application and let's not worry about tenancy and then look for part two in the near future. So I'm in my, my developer site right now. And if you look, I have one application that is currently in testing. If I zoom in here, you can see it's the Kudos Employed Recognition app. It's in version one. And so what I'm going to do is go ahead and click into this app and let me show you kind of the default experience of a SharePoint app. So when I click on that, it's actually going to take me to the app, wherever that's being hosted. In this case, I'm actually in debug mode, so it's local host. But if I had deployed it, it would actually be in Azure at this point in time. Um, I am able to pull in some of the look and feel of that host SharePoint site. So I can use the, the Chrome control to make it still feel like it's a part of the SharePoint site. And actually, it's taken on the same styles as our SharePoint site um, as well. So um, this is obviously a way I could deliver it, but um, I actually see this Kudos app being delivered maybe as part of an existing site in, in, in the site. So I'm actually going to also deliver this exact same page through an app park. So I'm going to go ahead and click back here, and I'll go back to the developer site. And if you look down the side navigation, I have a link for human resources. And, and really, this is just a, a wiki page that I wanted to be able to put my Kudos app inside of. And so it could be, you know, again, part of an existing page. So I'll go ahead and click on human resources and you can see um, now my page loads. This is just a regular wiki page on the left. I have just some normal content and on the right is my actual app. So you can see here's my app. It has a little lookup for uh, an employee that I want to send kudos to. Underneath that, it has some statistics. So it says that I've received one kudos this month and one all time. So, um, you know, again, th this is some of the benefit of storing it uh, for us to be able to report against. I can show, you know, what, what my statistics are for kudos over time. I've also sent two this month, and I have two more that I can send this week. So again, one of the benefits of storing the kudos is, is we could set quotas so that it's not something that's just um, way overused. And this is actually at Microsoft what we've done is um, we only allow someone to send, I believe, up to four kudos a week. So we can have quotas in here and then and we can limit what someone can do. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and, and send a kudos. I, I know someone that I want to send a kudos to. So I'm just going to start typing their name um, and I'll just type G-A-R. And when I do that, you can see, again, using the, the rich integration that we can have between our app and SharePoint, I'm able to use CSOM and reach into and search SharePoint for profiles that might match that name that I, I've started to type. 
As you can see, I, I, type, I type G-A-R, and I have Garrett, and I have, and I have Garth here. I'm actually going to go ahead and, and, and click on Garth and actually send a kudos to Garth. So as soon as I click on Garth, you can see what it does. It takes me to the form for me to um, send him a kudos. As it's done that, look what it's done. It's actually pulled in, you know, his title, his email. I see the, his picture just to make sure that that's who I wanted to send it to. And I have the form where I can actually type my kudos. So I'll go ahead and type a kudos here. Hey, uh, great job on the customer presentation last week. You are the demo master. Notice that as I'm typing, it's also... Um, showing me how many characters I have remaining. So we're going to limit the size of the kudos to maybe 140 characters, you know, whatever you, you feel comfortable with. But ultimately, you know, we need to be cognizant of the size that uh, of these kudos because we're storing it, in this case, in a SharePoint list. It could also be a database in the future, but um, we just want to be, you know, this shouldn't be a, a huge multi-paragraph thing. It's just a quick thing. Um, you can also see that on, on the screen it says that after this kudos, I can send one more this week. Again, that's kind of going back to the statistics and the quotas that we might have around how people can use this application. So I'm going to go ahead and click send. And when I click send, you can see that it's going to give me a little spinner that says it's working on it. And ultimately, when this is done, it's going to update my statistics and I could go off and immediately send another if I wanted to. So you can see that, you know, I've, I now have three sent this month and I only have one more than I can send. In fact, if I were to go ahead and send one more, um, maybe I'll send, well, I, I won't send another one here in this case. So um, let me do this is, is now let's actually see what sending that kudos did. So if I were to click up here to my news feed, if I click on the news feed, um, the first thing you're going to see is that it actually, uh, that kudos application added a new record to the news feed. So you can see that it says that I sent Garth a kudos for, and then it lists the kudos that I typed out. It also says that it was about a, a minute ago via the kudos employee recognition app. So it's actually showing that the application is what made this submission into the, the news feed. Um, and so, and also notice that the Garth here, who I sent it to, you know, it's actually a mention for him. So it's going to show up in his activity feed. And really all of the people that follow us would also see an update like this. So it's a really great way to start kind of letting that kudos trickle into the people that should actually see this. Now, this would be for a wide audience to be able to see the kudos. I mentioned it at Microsoft. We also get an email directly to uh, maybe the recipient and the managers of both the submitter and, and the recipient. So what I'll do is, is I can go out here to Outlook. I'm going to click on Outlook. And, and actually, I should note that everything I've been doing so far is in Office 365. That's one of the beauties of the new app model is that this, this rich app customization is something that I can deliver in the cloud. So I'll go ahead and click on Outlook. Um, and, and actually, while that comes up, I'll also, I, I do have um, Garth signed in here. So if I were to bring up um, Garth, if I were to um, refresh this, you can see it's showing me that there's one more update. And when I update it, uh, actually, it'll be a mention. Um, you can see that here's the mention for kudos. So I have that kudos mention um, from uh, Alex who just sent it. And if I go back to um, my inbox now, you can see here is my email that the kudos application sent. You can see it's from SharePoint kudos. And um, if you look, it sent it to Garth, but it CC'd myself um, and both of our managers. And it says, you have received a kudos from Alex. Um, hey, great job on the customer presentation. You are a demo master. And then it says, you know, this is being shared with both managers and in the newsfeed. So again, kind of that bringing that solution full circle, um, it was able to send this email and use that profile information to see who our managers were and send that out. So um, hopefully this gives you an idea of, of a, this is a real application. It's a very popular application at Microsoft. And this is how we could take something like that and deliver it as a SharePoint app that has rich integrations into social. It can send email. It could do workflow. It could do all these, these rich things. Um, and in, in part two of this series, we'll actually do the same thing um, but make it a little bit more complex in that um, it'll be hosted in Azure. But this time... We'll also store data in Azure with, with SQL Azure and, and keep tenancy into consideration. So um, hopefully uh, check out the blog, see how this was built, pull down the code, and good luck with SharePoint 2013 apps.